Hi everyone. So if you saw the last video, it was about Cool Beans. Cool Beans is our new signature blend. It's a medium roast. So I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into medium roasts and what I've discovered so far because normally I roast light, but for Cool Beans, like I said, I wanted it to be a bit more robust. It's meant for cold brew. One second. So yeah, so I wanted it to be a bit more robust, it needed to have a fuller body, and again, I just, that's kind of the richer, more chocolatey, more coffee tones I wanted to come out, but it took me a lot of trial and error because I really just started from scratch with the medium roast thing. Everything I've done is just with light roast in mind. So I just want to go over a couple things that I've discovered through all this trial and error of roasting to medium. Now, for all intents and purposes, we'll just consider a medium roast up until second crack, but not into rolling second crack. So once you hit that second crack, you're either letting it go a tiny bit in dropping, or as soon as you hear a second crack, you're dropping it. In my case, I occasionally hear a second crack once I drop it into the cooling tray. So I'm on the lighter side of a medium roast especially by like mainstream standards, by like Starbucks standards and whatnot. I'm definitely on the lighter side of a medium roast still. But anyways, number one thing, kind of obvious, is hitting the coffee with more heat up front. I charge a little bit higher and my highest gas setting is just a little bit higher. What this does is gives me a lot of energy up front, so by the end of the roast it can carry through to higher temperatures without crashing. But there's kind of a caveat that I discovered with this, and that's the more energy and heat you hit the coffee up front with, the more difficult it becomes later in the roast to manage that energy. So for example, the Ethiopia I use in Cool Beans is a natural coffee. It uh, absorbs heat pretty rapidly, but what I've noticed is that before first crack, if I'm giving it too much heat, you'll see the rate of rise start to plateau and usually what follows after a plateau is a crash. Give me a second, gonna check on this. So, so again, I was getting those plateaus and then kind of crashing and then flicking and that a crash and a flick is gonna give you really not enjoyable coffee. You're killing a lot of sweetness, you're making your coffee really roasty. And again, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I'm talking about using Artisan, the software on the uh, on the computer, Artisan or Cropster, and your rate of rise curve. So anyways, so the Ethiopia absorbs a lot of heat, but it also doesn't carry a lot of heat, if that makes sense. So it really requires hitting it up front with a lot of energy, but then towards first crack, gradually, just like you would on any roast, gradually decreasing your heat, but a lot more steps within that uh, decrease in heat. So we'll just, we'll just use three, two, one. Say those are your last gas settings, three, two, one. And those are completely arbitrary numbers. I'm just saying this because every roaster, every profile, every coffee is different. But say we're doing three, two, one at the end of your roast. Well, for this Ethiopia, maybe I go to three a little bit earlier, and then I go to two and a half, and then to two, and then one and a half, and then one. So, again, in the simplest terms, it requires much more gradual of a decrease on the heat in order to let that heat kind of slowly just find its way down on the curve rather than plateauing and then crashing. This Costa Rica, on the other hand, it takes heat pretty well. Um, it does not plateau, but I do occasionally get flick, flicks as in, you know, the coffee, the rate of rise, it stops raising in temperature, but then suddenly it'll flick up at a really rapid rate at the end of the roast. So I do have to watch out for that. But again, that has been the biggest, the biggest caveat with roasting medium is
Alright, learn from my mistakes. I was just like 10 seconds off on an adjustment. Don't film videos while you're roasting. Just watch my videos instead. But uh, anyways, yeah, so medium roast require a lot of heat up front. They Getting a full bodied coffee does not require blasting it until you're rolling through second crack. That's when you get a lot of the charcoal and roastier notes. So yeah, heat up front, gradual, more gradual decrease of heat towards the end is kind of what I'm finding. I'm still playing with it a lot. These coffees are completely different from one another, the Costa Rica and the Ethiopia, so it re requires kind of different tactics. And if you want to talk about development times, again, development times are relative to your roaster and your batch size, but I normally develop to about 16 or 17 percent. On these medium roasts, I'm going anywhere from 18 to 20 percent, just to give you an idea. But anyways, I got to finish this batch. I hope that helps. More heat up front, gradual decrease of heat in the end. I'll talk to you guys soon. I hear first crack starting. Have a good day. Happy roasting.